I'm still <laughs> stuck in the past because the 90s players like you guys, the ones we grew up watching in Kansas City, you know, helped shape everything that we are. So going back to that game, Joe Montana, head yeah. bounced off the turf, he gets hurt, Chiefs right. dropped a couple TDs. Take us back to it, man. That was your last uh, Super Bowl appearance. Yeah, that. Um, is one of the things too. In a game like that, you think about the guys that were on that team. You know, the the handful of Hall of Famers that, that the Bills had with with Bruce and Thurman and Andre and Jim. Uh, James Loft was a part of that crew. Um, one of the things about it, a game like that solidified a guy like Jim as being a first ballot guy because in the, obviously he never won the Super Bowl, but he was four and zero or 3-0 and in AFC Championship games against Joe Montana, John Elway, and Dan Marino. So we beat all those guys to get to the Super Bowl. Uh, said a lot about where Jim was. Uh, Bruce making that play on Joe uh, was iconic in our in our fan base, right? I'm, certainly it was vilified in yours. <laughs> but um, it, plays like that at that level are historic. Um, you know, there are plays that you remember from that. Um, you know about you know, and obviously in, in it, whatever game you're talking about, and whatever championship game you're talking about, it's always slanted towards the team that won it. Um, I think in some of these games, like particularly that one, um, those games tend to get forgotten because we didn't win the Super Bowl. You know what I mean? Uh, we were an also ran, and those games kind of get di diminished as time goes by, except for maybe Bills fans and Chiefs fans, right? <laughs> What do you think about uh, special teamers for the Hall of Fame, and special teams aces like yourself and Matthew Slater? Um, certainly there have been guys over the years who have played well and contributed to really good teams on special teams and did it consistently because that, you know, that's what you're talking about. Uh, and sometimes special teams get caught up in the, in the, uh, the thought process of is a one-time deal. Uh, you know, is it one kickoff return and that's the way the game went, you know. And, um, actually, it's, it, you go deeper into it, it's much more than that. Plus, uh, in the era I played in, I always thought it was the, the golden era of special teams because it was before the salary, half my career, most of it was before the salary cap, uh, but it was after the, the rosters enlarged. And, you know, when the, when the roster, when the game expanded the rosters, more guys got on the field and were able to contribute. And so you can make an argument that the Hall of Fame and all the guys they were recognized for should expand as well. Uh, I think that's the most compelling argument. When when the rosters on the field got big enough for more guys to contribute, and now if you've got 48 guys on the roster on game day, they're all on on the field, and unless maybe it's the backup quarterback who doesn't. Everybody else is contributing. Uh, so there should be probably an avenue for guys who've contributed in a consistent way at a high level to do that. And and it's not just it's not just me. I mean, there's a ton of guys who, if you're inside special teams in the NFL, you know guys like that. You know. Like Matt Slater and myself, Greg Minuski, um, Ron Wolfley, uh, you know Rufus Porter was a great player back in the day. Uh, Mossy Tatupu, of course, uh, Bates from from Dallas. Um, there's a ton of guys uh, who were really difference makers, and you know guys like Mossy Tatupu and Bill Bates from Dallas. You know they were instrumental in actually getting the the, the special teams player voted into the Pro Bowl. Yeah. You know, which was a huge transformative event. And finally, there was a place for guys of who played that role to be recognized by players and coaches in the league. And that was, a, that was an enormous step. You know, guys like Hank Bauer and guys who, who before that, who were tremendous players. So, um, you know, talk about the Hall of Fame. If a guy, can, you know, when the league expanded to allow guys to contribute in such a way, plus it was before player safety. Yeah. Um, so special teams were a little bit more freewheeling and more wide open, and there were bigger plays available at a, at a higher clip than there are today as well. So for all those things, yeah, the, you, I, I think there should be a conversation about it. But the bar should be high for the Hall of Pro Football Hall of Fame. And I'm flattered to be in the conversation and been mentioned like that, but I, you can't lose sleep over not being in the Hall of Fame. I mean, that's... Uh, I'm flattered, and I was honored to be a part. I wouldn't change anything about my career. Those guys are great, and, and I have no ill feelings, you know. Or bi I'm not bitter about that at all. Come on, man, that's yeah. it's a it's a compliment. Speaking of the Hall of Fame and it being a high bar to get in, us being here in Kansas City, you played against him enough times, Marty Schottenheimer, yeah, the coach, uh, that and Kurt to too, CBS. yeah, yeah. And so, son of a bitch, about him getting yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I, I would love to see Marty get in. Um, great coach at a high level, was a true leader, got a number of different franchises to a level. Yeah. Um, 
that's difficult. That takes a great coach, um, and certainly he did it, you know, in a way that a lot of people benefited from. A lot of players. Um, so yeah, Marty was. I, I played for him in the Pro Bowl. My first Pro Bowl was with Marty, um, and you know, you get to know. It, it was it was a gift. Um, the Pro Bowls I played in get a chance to play for a bunch of different staffs and. You know, his was the first one, uh, and Kurt was out there. His, his brother yes. Kurt was out there, and all, all those guys. And Cower was on on that Cleveland yeah. staff. That was the, it was when he was with Cleveland. So uh, I got a chance to rub up against those guys, and really, uh, really benefited me seeing how they coach and their attitude and how they handle players. Uh, Marty was a fixture in the league during my 13 years in the league, and was always always in the conversation for having a good team and and he was the reason i mean he he put his guys in a position to win a lot of games and uh, you know it's you know, unfortunate you know, that the yardstick for coaches seems pretty cut and dried in wins and losses and but to be consistent for that long and to have that kind of record one loss record under your belt certainly deserves a, a conversation about how good he could be and, and how good he was because there are guys who who won one and, damn, and they're not coaching anymore, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. To do that over a couple of decades with different franchises, I, I think that's worthy of a, of a conversation about that. Yeah. yeah, that's kind of, we talked to Jimmy Johnson at the Super Bowl and uh, asked him his thoughts, and he said because the lack of playoff success, maybe not, and that, that's obviously yeah. something that they're sure. talking about and considering. Of, of course. And Jimmy Johnson, not to take anything away from him, won the Super Bowls with the Cowboys, but went to the Dolphins, didn't yeah. have the success, and like right. you mentioned, Marty turned around the Browns, Chiefs, and Chargers, so. Yeah, and I'll say this too, and Jimmy, went, and the thing about Jimmy, he built the Cowboys from the foundation all the way up. Um, they were they were bad when he showed up. And the Herschel Walker trade. And he made those trade, the Herschel Walker trade, and drafted the right guys and, and built them step by step, stone on stone, brick by brick, until they were a, a two time world champion under him. And really, you know, make the argument they were, you know, he was the foundation was still there when, when Barry Switzer won it. So um, yeah, so there is something to be said for that. Uh, being able to build it up, but that's what that's what Marty Schottenheimer did as well. I mean, he did it with three different franchises and was successful at all of them. There seems to be a real bond between the teammates from your era in Buffalo. You're from Kansas, yeah, yeah. State, right? And yeah, yeah. Yet you wind up you're doing. I was a big Chiefs fan <laughs> yeah. when I was growing up. See, that's good to know. <laughs> awesome. You do you do a Bills radio show? You've yeah. done stuff with the Bills radio network. I believe you talked to Andre Reid and Carol Talley, Cleveland is doing it. Then it Tony Thomas, oh, you guys seem to have a real, real bond. Yeah. What do you attribute that to? Is it Marv Levy, the way he kind of Yeah, I, I think, you know, it's a little bit of the chicken and the egg. Do you have great success because you love each other and respect each other, and or do you love and respect each other because you won a lot of games? I don't know, but I know this, they, they were great players. I'm, and you mentioned those guys. You mentioned Thurman, Andre, Daryl Talley, Cornelius Bennett, Jim Kelly, Bruce Smith, and, you know, Will Wolford, Chris Moore, we, all of nine of it, we have a text loop. We touch base just about every day, every other day, uh, where somebody will chime in. Um, you, when you, I think when you accomplish a lot with a group of guys that are close-knit and there's a, an element of physicality involved where you're hurting for each other physically, where you, you know, where you suck it up and play even though you don't think you should, or you know, when you, you get shot up just to practice. Uh, when you show up and you're not feeling well, but you practice anyway, and your teammates know it and, and they appreciate it, and you do that for each other over the over course of a long career, time and time again, you appreciate those guys. And when you become friends with truly great men, like you know, Jim Bruce Thurman, Cornelius Bennett's of the world, uh, Daryl Talley's, uh, it's a gift. I've always considered it a gift. Those guys um, were friends of mine and and showed me a lot of grace and love and forgiveness uh, for all the you know stuff that you go through as a football player and a, and a teammate. Um, so uh, as you know, as, as much it is, you know, some of it's about football. A lot of it's just about you know being involved with a bunch of great men. Uh, Marv Levy being one of them. So um, when a group of that qu high quality guys is thrown together and accomplishes a great deal um, and you're lucky to be in on it you know um, it sticks with you and uh, I think I and I appreciate that about that team and and those and I still appreciate about those guys 
what do you make of this current Bills Chiefs kind of rivalry that they've kind of rekindled? Yeah. I mean, obviously Josh had that great thought was uh, game winning drive yeah, in yeah. the divisional game, 13 seconds left. Mahomes takes his overtime, they get the coin toss, take it down, it, but just yeah. the Mahomes, Josh Allen kind of it's, rivalry. Um, if, if you want to be great, you, nobody knows you are unless you have great people to compete against. I'm sure the Chiefs feel that way about the Bills and the and the Bengals and you know the, even the Eagles and you know when you and the Chargers in your own division those those teams that, that show up and um, the only way people know you're great is if you got somebody great to compete against and show them um, in tough games. It's a great rivalry right now, no question about it. It's going to continue, uh, particularly in, in the conf AFC uh, with Josh and Pat and Joe and Justin and. Yeah, you know, I mean it's going to keep going. Um, those guys are playing at a high level. I, I think this Chiefs-Bills rivalry, as long as those two guys are around. I mean, I lived through the Marino and Kelly years in Buffalo, where with the Dolphins-Bills are in the same division. Um, as long as those two guys are breathing, that that, that rivalry is going to be pretty special. I'm, I, it's it, it's absolutely even today. If they, if they lined up in the parking lot right now, I mean everybody'd want to watch, right? Yeah. So that's that's what it takes. Uh, everybody wants to see those two guys go because you know they're they're as good as it gets, and and it means more yeah. when those two teams play. Is there anything that Josh Allen or the Bills specifically need to do to get over that hump, you feel like? Or no, I don't think so. I think both those teams, I think they, the, the Chiefs have been good enough since Pat started. This is, Pat's been a starter. They've been good enough every year to go to and win it. And I feel like the Bills, since 2020, have probably been there. Uh, jo that's when Josh kind of spread his wings. So when you get to that point, uh, I think both those teams every year have got to go in thinking they're good enough to go to and win it all. But you got to have stuff go your way. I mean, this last year with the DeMar Hamlin thing, with the Von Miller's injury, and with a couple other things that, you know, went on, it, you know, it stacked against them. And it kind of, and some other injuries kind of stacked up against them. Josh's elbow was a problem. Yeah. Um, and then the timing of it, it could have just as easily, if Pat's ankle was a little bit worse, all of a sudden everything looks different, you know? You got to have a little bit of that because that's, you know, that's the unforeseen nature of it. Um, but I, don't, I, I think both these clubs, do things in such a way it's going to give them a chance, particularly with the quarterbacks they got and the guys around them, the, the special guys around them, you know, the Kelseys of the world and the, you know, the Steph Diggs and, you know, these, both these teams are good enough and they're going to stay good enough to go to and win the Super Bowl every year if, you know, if everything, were, if they, if they can swing it, you know what I mean, if they can stay together, if they, if the injuries don't get them or whatever. Um, so I don't think there's any one thing that's going to put them over the top you got to play well on that day. When Pat and, and Josh get on the field, they got to play well on that day. And everybody else got to play well on their side of the ball. And it's it's really that's that's the fine line I think they're they're at right now. I don't think there's any one thing that's going to put everybody over the top. Certainly they got to they got to draft well. You know, they got to, you know, sign the guys, they got to get some production, but when push comes to shove, they're both those clubs are doing the exact right thing all the time and you just got to play well on that day and advance. Thanks so much. My pleasure, guys. Really good.